All right. So the the thing that's interesting about Melinda Gates book First of all, she is a great champion of women's education. Um, second of all, this is not a research book. So you don't, you don't use her. Um, no, Breesty. <laughs> Sorry, Breesty. Breesty says she's shouting and we can't hear her at all, but. Um, so when I ask you to do a research paper, don't imitate this book, right? Because she gives these huge generalizations. She doesn't even have footnotes. Uh, this is not a research paper. Uh, it's the kind of thing that sells, right? It's for the broader public. It's not a, you know, not something for an academic college level paper. But I think uh, reading it, if you have time to read it, it's good because it gives you a lot of practice in, th in, your, in how you should write because not the content of what you write, but just in general, it's easy to read. It's probably geared toward, um, I don't know, eighth grade level, ninth grade, which is fine if it's uh, your second language. It doesn't have academic jargon. Right, you don't have to just try to dig out what it's saying. You can read what it's saying. It's a, it gives you a, ideas about what's going on in the world that are really nice. I think you probably want to know that. Um, but I'm not going to assign it in the class, at least not at the moment, because I haven't found anything um, that's sort of relevant enough and serious enough to assign, but I did, I did post the News New York Times article about Melinda Gates and about their divorce. Um, Marzia? Thank you, Dr. Freer. I wanted to ask you that is it possible if you send the PDF of this book? Uh, we can't hear you, Marzia. Can you? Uh, Professor. Can you hear now? Now, yeah. Yeah, uh, I say that, uh, can I ask you that if, uh, is it possible if you share the PDF of this book? I, it's not a PDF. I bought the book, like I'm old fashioned. I mean, that. do you have the PDF? Yeah. I don't, cause I don't know how to, see it's against the law in the US, right? And so, especially since I'm on a college uh, account. <laughs> I don't think it's too good to break the laws um, when I'm on my college account. It, you know, that is not good. Um, but I think I'll, I'll probably scan the first chapter or something. I just know that my students are much better at stuff than I am. Um, but I wouldn't do it anyway, because American laws are really strict about stuff like that for obvious reasons. How could they make any money? Um, but one thing I did want to say is that even though Melinda Gates is a Hera in the sense that she is where she is because of her husband's wealth, she, that's not her personality type. And that's, it's, it's interesting. And I think she is actually a Hestia, who's the more contemplative one. And we'll get to the Hestia in, in a, you know, a couple of weeks. And I, that's what I am too. So when I read this book, I think, yeah, if I had married some rich guy, which I definitely did not, <laughs> um, I would feel the way she felt, which is, she really cared about social justice and she really wanted to do this work, but she wanted to do it behind the scenes. She didn't want to have a public face. She doesn't like going out in the public. And um, she talks about that. Um, she says, I like to work off stage. I'm a private person in certain ways, a, a bit shy. 
I was the girl in school who raised her hand while other kids bellowed their answers from the back row. Um, I want to study the data, to, to go see the work, to meet the people, develop strategy and solve problems. But uh, I, was a, I was learning how to give speeches, but I didn't want to be this big public advocate, right? I didn't want to, I just, I'm not Artemis, I'm not Athena, I'm not uh, Aphrodite who would want to dress up and perform and look, you know, like somebody you'd be attracted, you'd get attention. Um, anyway, that was kind of interesting. And that's the kind of stuff that I hope you start noticing after we've read all seven of them. You can figure out that right from when little girls or little boys, right from when they're pretty little, they start on this sort of trajectory and you have to self-correct. So Melinda Gates has become a big public figure, but she's had to step out of her comfort zone to do that. And so when you're writing your paper about which goddess or goddesses are, you, are most natural for you, then you're going to have to say things like that. Um, so Melinda cared a lot about women's lifting up women, but she had to, she wanted to just do the research in the back and, you know, get someone else to do the public speaking. She had to push herself, right? And so you probably should anticipate that. I had a student a year ago. She is also a Hestia. She's quiet, very thoughtful. You know, she, she'd write these really nice essays but she cared about environment. And she said, I know I'm gonna have to become more of a manager. I'm gonna have to be more assertive. I'm gonna have to, you know, go out in the public and shake hands and, you know, I'll do this stuff that doesn't come natural. But if I just stay to my mission, you know, I'll be able to push myself out of my comfort zone. So that's the kind of thing I want you to be thinking about. The other thing is that Melinda, she clearly has her own mind. She doesn't, um, she's her own person. And I think Bill wanted somebody who was independent. He didn't want a wife <laughs> who would move when he needed to move and follow him in his career and have the dinner parties for him. and and you know meet with the other wives of wealthy people you don't hear about melinda gates meeting with um warren buffett's wife or you know <laughs> uh but now mackenzie uh scott now that mackenzie scott is divorced she too is her own person and she's doing her own philanthropy and they have linked i i i'm I would bet that they are like soulmates, that they like each other a lot. Um, so anyway, that's the kind of stuff that the goddess, studying the goddesses you, is sort of the filter through which you can see things. And also um, for me, studying about Hera was really good for me because this is so unnatural to me. And I would tend to be very judgmental of somebody like this, like the girls in high school, you know, that absolutely had to have a steady boyfriend. <laughs> oh, this was not me, you know, and then they pride themselves on that. They're so much better than me because I'm, you know, no, but no boys want to take me out and just all this stuff that they want to do the dinner parties. Oh my gosh, that's the last thing in the world I want to do. They want to uh, run the library board or you know the town library board, the school board, the hospital board, be in these sort of supportive roles and sort of in the public eye, showing everybody, you see my husband is a good guy because here I am doing all this good stuff. 
And I actually was invited into this women's sorority I, in this little town in the South. And it met in the mornings, which my college classes, you know, meet an odd hour, so I actually could do it. But it was so horrible. I just, oh, I hated it. Um, because it was one of these things where you get asked. And it's the biggest status thing in the town to be asked into this sorority. And so I was really stuck. I did not want to do it, but the only thing snobbier than belonging to it would be to refuse, right? To get invited and say no, that would be really snobby, right? And I represent the college and I'm aware that I represent the college just like a hair a woman is aware that she represents her husband, right? Well, I know that because I was a preacher's kid and I knew that, you know, my parents didn't talk about it, but I just knew church people looked at me, you know, and I kind of represented my dad and I, you know, it would make my dad look really bad if I started acting out. I didn't really want to anyway, but anyway, so um, so I'm aware of that. And um, I just, I definitely would not have gotten along with women like that. Luckily, I hardly ever run into them anymore. But like when you're in high school, especially you got thrown in with all these different kinds of people. And luckily at AUW, again, you tend to find women who are, they're, they're different. Some of them are more, um, some of them are more motherly and they want to go into education. Some of them are, you know, they're different. The AUW, I want them to be different, but they're alike in their, in their ambition, right? In their motivation, in their drive, in their ability. So, so it is kind of nice that you would get together with the other AUW women and you would go see what clubs they belong to. And so you could see that you're all similar in certain ways because you're all really into education, but you're all also different, which means you can all get to a high level and then go out and do different things um, to promote the well being of your society. So so all of that is good. Um, and then, you know, every, every step of the way, when it was, who, what, she goes to college to, to find a, a husband. It's like, no, no, I never would have done something like that. And I would have been very judgmental of somebody who did that. That's the other side of it. When you study these goddesses, it should encourage you not to be judgmental of other women. If you can figure it out, you know, you come into conflict with another woman instead of sort of dissing her, which again is the way oppressed people keep oppressed is they, they dig on each other. If you could just find the pattern and say, oh yeah, that's a Hera and just, <laughs> Don't judge her, just stay away from her. <laughs> she's not you and she's going to annoy you, but it's not her fault and she has her thing and that's fine. Um, so uh, I don't, it's so amazing to me, right? From right when I was little, I wasn't like that. I didn't go to college for that reason at all. Um, I didn't look for a husband like the kind that she looks for at all. I, um, I wasn't, you know, I had no interest in entertaining the people he worked with, right? In 20 years of marriage, we went to two Christmas parties. That's just, <laughs> that's amazing that you can get out of all that stuff over 20 years. Um, and when we did, I ended up getting into philosophical conversations with the people at the table, <laughs> which finally my husband said that, that was a bit annoying. <laughs> and then um, when it came to my 
children, right? I would never choose my husband over my kids, right? Um, and then when things fell apart, I did not damage my, ch my uh, children. Uh, I understood it, but I didn't do it. And then, you know, picking up afterwards, I didn't look for another guy. And now that I'm independent, it was just, I hope that you get like this particular chapter, I think is the best one for being able to see how very, very different people are. And it's just, you know, I'm the example at one side and someone else. Um, and then again, you can figure out, you know, for yourself, which one are you and which one is the one that is just like, no, no, never. Um, and let's see, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's, that's kind of some of the main lessons. And these, these are women that you read about in the paper. I hope all of you have brought someone from your country who is the wife of a powerful guy, maybe the wife of the president or the wife of some CEO, and she plays that role well. Um, and, and it's perfectly respectable, like there is a need. So in the when I was living in rural Arkansas, it became very evident that it was bad that these women Hera women used to run these little towns and they used to be on the school board and the library board. I mean, those were important roles to fill for educated women because now there are towns in Arkansas where all the educated women have jobs, like they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're teachers, professors, you know, they have careers. And so the people who fill in those positions are very uneducated women, right? They're the women that homeschool their kids so they don't have to learn science. And they'll go onto the library board and decide what books to order, Oh, right? So this has been a great loss. Um, so again, I've learned how to really respect Hera. I've even gotten to the point where I say, I really wish the women who really were like that um, weren't denigrated in my society. Now they tend to be mocked out, um, right? Because they ought to have their own career. And that's unfortunate because they, they have uh, contributed to a higher quality of life. And so I am really curious about the examples you come up with because I really am ignorant about in developing countries how much um, how much of a role do the Harris play in public life? And then the other thing is that I know a lot of my students have said that many women they know in their families, in their extended families, they're expected to be Hera. And the ones that like it are fine but the ones that don't like it are really run into a lot of trouble just because they're not, you know, the society wants you to be Demeter or Hera and that's it, right? And, and that's not fair. But anyway, so I look forward to what you have to say because I think I, it helps me a lot learn about what's going on with women in developing countries. And this is the kind of thing that Melinda Gates wouldn't talk about, right? It's only the kind of thing, I don't know anybody who talks about it besides me, and I hope you all don't mind. <laughs> but I think it does help you understand the world and women and your life, or I wouldn't teach it. So um, Mahira, what we were gonna, I, I asked you to find one example of somebody you knew who was a Hera and one example of somebody in your society in public life. Um, okay, so go ahead. Some examples of this Hera in, that I know are like all, all my, 
uh, grandparents, my grandmother, or like my aunt, are Hera because they, they are uh, uh, thought to adjust in marriage. Like, you need to be Hera, you need to go with your husband and maintain a social life. Uh, otherwise, if you are suffocated in that marriage, you nothing to do, you have to adjust because there is society, you need to do that. And then they are like devoted to family, they are on, only wants to make family like marriage. Uh, bond, uh, even if they don't like it. I think this is a mindset because they, uh, from the early age, it is taught, so they uh, they have no choice. They have to like it. Hey, they have to be here. And then uh, this is, there is also a tendency that in not in my family, but in my society, uh, they see that uh, uh, like Hera's husband cheated on her with another woman. Then Hera then... Um, Hera became aggressive. It's a tendency that if husband does anything like that, big fight, big controversy like that. So was there somebody in the public eye in your country that there was a big blow up where he had an affair and she... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was an actor in our country uh, who... Um, um, Bangladeshi actor in our country uh, that... Uh, was married to a, uh, another actress in the same industry, but then uh, after having a kid, he left. And then did she make a stink? Oh my God, there was big controversy years. Like months after months, there was interviews and everyone was so excited. The actress got more PRP than the uh, uh, actor. Did she take revenge? Did she, was there another woman that she went after or? I think she beat, uh, she became more popular with, with the sympathy of her kid. She became more popular from that. And everyone was hating that actor. Like, how could he do that? Why did not he stick with her? Uh, if he loved her, uh, they had a kid. Okay, well, that's good, right? That the public is going to support her. Um, you know, in my generation, and my parents would not have done this, but there were parents. If, if the guy left, it would always be her fault. Like, how come you couldn't keep him, you know? Um, do you think it still is that way in your country, Mahira? Do you yeah. think sometimes uh, that, that you could not keep him, could not keep him happy? You should have listened to him, what he says, just listen quietly. Uh, if he becomes angry, just to keep quiet. Uh, and then, um, then, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a tough role. And, but I guess my main point is some women like that role and I don't want to judge them, but I think most women don't. And it's really difficult for most of them if they're forced, right? The older generations thinking is like that. We can't change it because it's fixed. If we try to change it, we become uh, like we argue a lot. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I, it's so interesting for me to listen to the stories because you all are making such a leap forward, right? And, and I know it must be difficult sometimes. I think I did say that in one class that my life is way more complicated than my mother's, but I would not trade it. So I think, yeah, your lives are more complicated. Like you don't have to accept the Hera Demeter thing and just accept it, but it takes a lot of psychological work as well as all the other schoolwork and everything else to really find yourself and be comfortable and, and get over being criticized and all that. But, um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe, maybe my book will help you there too, because boy, Professor Beck is nothing like that. And like, she doesn't care, you know. Um, I did want the marriage. I, I believe in having long-term sexual commitment. I believe in going through the ups and downs of life together. I really do. It was hard to let go, but I mean, once I realized the person I was married to had no interest in it, okay, you know, I have other things to do. <laughs>
Um, so Toma, what about you? Yes, ma'am. I also found um, a woman like uh, what Mahira said in my community uh, and also in public eyes. Uh, like um, uh, the guys is my uh, um, cousin uh, who is get married very in our early ages and he accepted her Mary's life and uh, whatever her husband told her to do, he just doing and. Um, he don't bother the boundaries to get um, enough poverty from her husbands like this. And uh, she just accept her marriage life and uh, give birth babies and take care of them and their families. Um, and uh, she doesn't push her back to uh, do work outside or like these things. And in public eyes, um, there is a woman um, uh, like what Mahira said, I also found uh, I also find um, women um, in politics, a political figure um, who is um, got married in early ages, uh, and uh, she give her two babies, and after give two babies, she just left her husband and took another guy, and married with her, and like uh, she married three boys. Like just she give birth to babies and uh, left her and then again got married, then left her and again got married like this. Four times? No, ma'am, three times. Three times, okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Well, actually she would be more like Aphrodite, I think. It's when a guy does that. I mean, Hera really wants to stay married. That's her thing. Um, but did she marry up? Was each husband wealthier than the previous one? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So her goal yes, was, okay. <laughs> so she wants to- make him money. Yeah, what? making money like this. Okay, so she's in, okay, I get that. Um, yes. She wants to get richer, a rich guy and then a richer guy, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And have babies. Okay. That's great. Um, do you think all of your cousins are like that? Or is there a lot of difference among the girls your age? No, ma'am. I think uh, it's not uh, about my old cousins. Uh, there are some of them. And um, uh, but my uh, and other cousins are so independent, um, uh, they can uh, do whatever they want and uh, like uh, they didn't uh, get um, marriage in very early ages and um, when they completed their education, they just, her parents push, like uh, told her to get married and they just accept because after education, um, they, uh, they are um, they chose the part to way of marriage and like this, and they are so independent. So I don't think like that. They still go back and play the old roles after what, after college or after high school? Um, like after colleges. Okay, and they don't have careers after that? Yeah. Not like that. Some of uh, some of gain their careers, uh, but some are not. Okay. Um, Bristy, can we hear you now or not? Maybe not. Okay. Habiba, what about you? Okay, Habiba, are you there? If you're there, put something in the chat, okay? Okay, so Habiba, if you don't put something in the chat, I have to assume that you turned on your machine and walked away, <laughs> which, oh, okay, there you go. So you can't talk, Habiba. 
Is that is that correct? That you don't have a your microphone doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, Bristi, go ahead and write in the chat, and Habiba should write in the chat also. And I won't look at it for a while because you can write, you know, quite a bit if you want to. Um, Amina, what about you? Ma'am, actually, I'm so sorry. I'm uh, quite confused about this story. So I want to know more about this, then I will finish my exam works. Okay, I will just cut it. Did you read the yeah. assignment? Uh, yes, ma'am, but a little bit. I couldn't finish it. Yeah, actually, yesterday I was very sick. So I went to a health center. Okay. That's the problem. Okay. And that's Thank fun. you, ma'am. Um, are you better today? No, ma'am. Actually, I'm thinking that I, I will go after the class again. Okay. All right. So you can just do it in your post. Just make sure you communicate to me in your post that you did eventually figure it out. Um, it's partly just because I want you to, you know, go through the material, but partly because in your next paper, you're going to have to use it. So you do need to kind of process all the material. Um, Marzia, Marzia, go ahead. Yes, yes, Professor, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Professor, I know uh, about uh, not in a public eye, but I know a girl that got married in early age, uh, maybe in I. I guess yeah. As uh, she is a family familiar, so she when she talks, she she says that uh, when she was in high school, she got married. Uh, although like uh, her family were against her decision, but she accepted to marry. And after her marriage, like she faced lots of problem because her mother-in-law didn't allow her to continue her education, and wanted uh, her to give birth. So, uh, and uh, after a while, uh, because her family wanted her to get education, but she decided to get married. So uh, her family, after a while, uh, like uh, told that uh, that uh, told the family of her husband that please let her to at least go to university and take a bachelor degree, and they accepted. And after a while. Again, uh, her mother-in-law fight with her and they didn't allow her. So she faced lots of problems and uh, she couldn't continue her education. And right now, like she she says that she is like in prison because she, she cannot study and she cannot go outside freely because her mother-in-law doesn't allow her and says that uh, you have to work at home, you have to do all the stuff, you have to like serve the guests, or you have to take care of the children, that's all for you. And she says that uh, she cannot come out with this, she cannot uh, like uh, 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 divorce because it was her own decision and, and she has to accept to stay in this marriage. And this is a life that she says that uh, because she chose it and she cannot come out uh, from this. And she, she says that she has to accept it till, till the end because she now she has two children and she has to take care of them and she cannot leave them behind. And she actually, she, she is so close. I know her and she is going through much things and the, the most uh, regrettable part of her life is that she says she had dreams to study, but she thought that by, uh, by marrying, they will not stop her because her husband is, uh, uh, like her husband can support her uh, financially, but uh, like her uh, husband's family doesn't allow, like uh, uh, in Afghanistan, like when, uh, when someone marry, uh, mostly they stay with their, their husband's family for a long time and, and the family is dependent on the on boys, for example, mother, father, and other siblings. 
on the elder boys so they live together and right now the responsibility of all the family like the housework is on her she has to cook she has to wash she has to serve the guests she has to take care of children and all the time at home and when when like she wants to go outside she has to face lots of problems to ask and finally they allow her so it's it's a life of like it's the life of her yeah um the other the other story behind the story is that so many women make life hard for other women right yes yeah that's this is terrible discrimination from a woman against the women yep so um yeah so i think you should be really careful have you ever done that have you ever gotten pitted against another girl <laughs> in high school did you ever i don't know how professor get annoyed with another girl in ways that you wouldn't get annoyed with a boy i don't uh, know uh Actually, I do not have experience of being classmates with a boy or fighting. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had classmates like maybe we were uh, we were sometimes angry with each other because of some things like studying these things. Gossiping. I know that what Facebook teenage girls are really wounded by their social media posts. There's a whole lot of evidence that it's it's affecting girls and i think that's because they gossip about each other or they put each other down more than the boys do they harm each other i don't have you heard about that research about um, i didn't hear about that but but i think uh, like it's not something good for me like i personally i'm not that much of a uh, social media person because uh, i do not use it a lot right just, just sometimes if we just to check the news what's going up yeah i don't use it either but it was on the news um yeah. because um mark zuckerberg will not let up you know he will not monitor the facebook Oh yeah, there's a woman who is a whistleblower. There's a woman who used to work there and she exposed what's going on that they know it does harm and they're not doing anything about it. Um, so that, yeah, that was on the news one day. And it, I don't know, again, in developing countries, how much of a deal that is. Um, anyway, um, Fatima, what about you? Yes, ma'am, I'm not clear about the history. So did you read the assignment? Uh, not in the... Uh, let's see, I can't hear you. Did you read the assignment? Uh, yes, ma'am, I did it. So you couldn't find examples? Uh, no ma'am not yet okay um do you think you might think of some by the time i get through the end of all the yes ma'am okay all right so i'll just wait um trine and then could you tell me how to pronounce your name again yes professor my name is jen and you can call me whatever uh it's easy to, to you trin trin yes yes okay all right. Did you find examples? Yes, I find example, but uh, I hope it. Um, I think so. Um, about have an archetype, right? Mm -hmm. So I found example on my aunt. aunt. Okay. Um, and my aunt is a model. I think that she is a model of the. Um, Goddess Hera, 
of it because she is truly a strong woman um, and don't in any situation. She doesn't get to choose a happy marriage and uh, her husband is always cheating and hurting her and we all know that, but she ignores those things with her immense love, especially for her two daughters and because of them, she, she never want to give up this marriage. Um, she values marriage and family. Sometimes her husband is also a violent person, but when he is seriously ill, she is always by his side and accompanies him through through the death. Um, and she is an example of a woman who puts herself to work to have others, what, whatever it is. She is a person full of compassion, enthusiasm, and always considers the interests of others above her own. Um, she is a nurse as her carrier, carrier and also a midwife. And she, she takes care of a lot of the mothers and babies. Okay. Um... Does her husband cheat on her? Yes, yes. Oh. Does, does she get mad at the woman, he, the women that he has? No, appeared? no, no, completely no. Okay, does she get mad at him? Um, it's not really. She just don't talk to him, don't have a um, time they don't they didn't communicate to each other and she's just um forgive me day yeah. yeah what about someone in vietnam in your country someone what what, what do you think is Sorry. there is Cash. there a wife married to some pretty well known Vietnamese CEO or political figure or somebody? Um, yes, but I don't really truly know about them. So I don't think that I can give you an example for now. Okay, if you think of something, just raise your hand when we're done. Yes, I will. If I, okay. I will write in the chat spot. Is it okay, Professor? Yeah, I, yeah. That's okay. Yep. Uh, Dolana, do you have something? Yes, Professor. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to say uh, like one woman uh, that I know who is my aunt. <clears throat> like uh, she, uh, she loved uh, a person and uh, they married after uh, like uh, she always uh, like avid by her husband and like uh, <clears throat> uh, because of her marriage life she give up her study and uh, like he uh, she always doing the household work and all these things maintain the family and social life uh, <clears throat> and um, she also give a uh, give birth uh, a baby but after 12 years uh, of her marriage life uh, my uh, uncle uh, um, uh, like um, her husband divorced her because of like uh, he loved another like woman <laughs> like uh, uh, it was so sad, like after 12 year marriage life and spending uh, times uh, uh, together, they divorced each other. Like, um, I think uh, <clears throat> for, for her, uh, like uh, marriage life, uh, uh, married life, uh, she uh, give up her uh, like uh, study and all these things. Uh, and um, her mother-in-law always uh, like uh, <clears throat> told her to do works and not, uh, she did not allow to go her outside and all these things, but, uh, her husband uh, like uh, like had an affair with another woman and uh, she <clears throat> he had uh, 
got married with uh, the uh, woman and divorced my aunt so i think it's uh, it's uh, kind of similar with uh, like hira and uh, yeah did what about the mother in law did she just go in and live with her her uh, son's second wife then did she move away from your aunt yes yes she she uh, she easily accepted the second wife okay so now does your aunt have any income uh like uh yes uh, she had income uh, uh, she like uh, now she is working in garments uh, and um, her uh, her uh, like uh, uh, baby like uh, he, she is uh, a daughter and she is in the in she was in her father's uh, and uh, like um, and now uh, she is independent uh, she is working in garments factory and uh, like okay did you did you find someone in the public eye, some well-known person? Uh, I I also found uh, an example that Mahira gave. Uh, Mahira had already gave that, like uh, Bangladeshi actress, uh, like uh, um, um, they loved each other and uh, married, uh, uh, like uh, married after eight years or nine years her married life they they like uh, <clears throat> like um, it was a big breakup huh <laughs> yes okay um roshani how about you i don't uh, really have such um, things but I will think and again I will tell you, Professor. Oh, okay. So you're not read. Did you read the chapter? Yes, Professor. I have, but like um, I don't uh, really like finding. The, I'm not really finding the suitable person whom I can, you know, explain in a better way. So I'm still thinking, and uh, I will let you know uh, during the discussion, Professor. Okay. Um, let's see, Pooja. You said it's raining there. Can we hear you? Are you think? You think yeah, that's what Professor. It's raining so heavily outside. Okay, so Pooja, you think you can't? Um, do you want to type something, Pooja? I don't know if you can hear me. Um, yes, she'll type something. Okay, so here's the one from Risti. I have a sister who got married recently, seven or eight months ago now. She's pregnant, but before she got married, she used to love another guy. Uh-oh. Just for her family, she married her husband. After marriage, she changed totally and became an actual wife. Now that, as her husband said to her, she does everything, uh, which is very strange because in her parents' house, she was very aggressive. Nobody could order her to do anything. She was like a boy in the family, but now her husband quarrels with her and she doesn't say anything to him. She just cries and blames herself. Oh my goodness. There's not a lot of future in that. Oh my gosh. The thing I think about is really, this is gonna go on for 60 years or 50 years. I mean, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, my daughter married somebody and he used to pick on her. And I just thought, really, she's going to put up with this for 60 years. But I didn't say anything. It's just that she, she, she left. <laughs> she left him, which I think is good. Um, all right. Well, that's sad, Breesty. We'll just have to see what happens. Um, if she figures out what to do next. Um, where are we? Melanie. 
So someone um, that I know is my friend Brooklyn and she's my age and she plays softballs with me. So she can't have children yet, but she talks about having children all the time and getting married to her boyfriend. And um, he actually has cheated on her and she's still with him. And once, and she actually lives with him now. So she plans on sticking it out, but um, she's also really the jealous type. <clears throat> and she will confront the other girls who he, cheats on her with so I thought she would be a good example <laughs> so he's cheated more than once huh yeah he has and she knows it yes she does yeah maybe you and, should give her this book to read <laughs> yeah really and then someone in the public eye here I chose is um Courtney Kardashian because she was with her um first husband for years and they had three children together and he actually um had an alcohol addiction and he would cheat on her all the time but she stayed with him because of their kids and really because she was in the public eye and so she didn't want to have everything blow up and but she ended up leaving him and now she's with someone who's even more famous and has more money so <laughs> okay um all right well let me do another uh story there's the college i teach at in the u.s is called lion college and um, Mr. Lyon was very, very wealthy, and he gave a lot of money to Lyon College. And um, his son was, you know, inherited all this money. He was clearly an alcoholic because he we used to have these parties, and he was already drunk when the party started. And he had bloodshot eyes, and he had the big bulbous nose, and he died early. But I had a neighbor in Minnesota. And I told her she was from Arkansas. And I said, oh, I'm going to go down there and teach. She goes, oh, Lyon College. Her niece was Mr. Lyon's wife. And, and she said that her brother told her, told her kids, you must marry a rich man, right? And so Jane Lyon had been married to one rich man. And she was divorced and now she married the guy who was named after my school. It was really bizarre, but I introduced myself and she goes, oh, my Aunt Jane told me about you. <laughs> but she just, she was taught to marry rich. That was her duty. Um, I don't know, I think it's so sad, but it happens. And she didn't seem to mind. Um, all right. Oh, yeah, there was another woman. A man uh, gave enough money to the school. So we had a building named after him. But a lot of that money was going to come after he died. And right before he died, he, he had an in-home nurse taking care of him because he didn't want to go to the hospital. He had enough money. Well, he ends up marrying her, right? And that was her fourth 80-year-old rich guy that she'd married, right? <laughs> she marries, you know, old guys, old rich guys. They die. She collects all the money. She marries another one. And so we didn't get this money for this building, <laughs> But there's a name for that in the U.S. It's called a gold digger. I don't know if you've ever heard that name, but it was the trustees. OK, at these small schools, there are rich people who are on the board of trustees and they give money to the school. Well, we have parties every once in a while. And oh, my God, like their wives are just like such a stereotype of you know, <laughs> the lady playing this role 
and oh my gosh it was just uh well you know I tried to be nice. I made friends with one of them. I tried to make friends with them because I wanted them to give money to the school. <laughs> and of course, their husbands would die before they did because they always married these younger women, right, who were clueless about anything because they wanted them to be clueless and innocent and they just go home, don't want to talk about anything. And so these guys die and here are these women. And so I made friends with as many of them as I could so that, <laughs> so they would give Lion College money because, you know, you don't want to make them angry. <laughs> but here, you, I have a weird life, don't I? I mean, <laughs> but, you know, the older you get, the more you know that, oh, my gosh, there's a Hera and there's a this and there's a that. And it's, it is funny. Um, now, here's somebody, the name, I don't recognize the name. You must be on a different computer. It's K-E-T-H-R-I-N-K-U-J-U-R. Who is that? You want to unmute yourself? Um. Okay, so this I here. think it's Jennifer. Jennifer, is it? Is that Jennifer? I just want to make sure and then I can call you, say you're here. Okay, all right, so let me um, mark you here. Here you go. Okay, I have the same example as Bristy, but the difference is my friend married her boyfriend happily, did everything for him. But his family was so conservative after marriage, he started doing what his family were telling him. So it became so stressful for my friend, but she waited for so long, thinking that everything would be fine. Okay, is, is everything still fine and she's waiting? <laughs> or is she still waiting for everything? Um, Okay, so Breesty says that her friend, her sister, is going to get divorced, thinking about it, not sure because the society takes it, um, judges her for it, right? Um, okay, so in Geneva's case, she did divorce him and she's happy. Um, yeah, I'm kind of wondering how common divorce is these days in developing countries, but I would imagine that most of you and your families are connected with people who are more upwardly mobile, more ambitious, a little bit outside of the norm, even though the norm is powerful. So it might be more common among the people you know than in the rural areas or whatever. Um, let's see, who else hasn't spoken? Fayasa, do you want, it's your turn. Professor, I joined late, so I, do, I don't know what's going on here, sorry. Well, it's the same that it always is, that you read the chapter from the book on Hera, and then you come up with an example of somebody you know and then somebody in the public eye right so it's just the same as we always do again i try to make everything routine so that you know if you do yeah get, yeah do you want to just wait for yeah. a minute and listen to a few it others okay um so who just raised their hand and it disappeared habiba Mar I, yeah, Marzia, I really look forward to what you're going to say, but I, I think I need to make sure everybody has had a chance first, and then I definitely will come back to you, no problem. So, okay. Habib Habiba, did you have something? Nope. Disappeared. All right, Marzia. And I, I, I'm not trying to avoid you. I love to hear what you have to say, but Sir, can you hear me? I think my hair, your phone is describing this way. Okay, so Habiba. Yes, you, Go ahead. 
Okay, this is one of the example of women in my country uh, that is related to Hera. Uh, she is from my village. Her family, her family forced her to get married to one one of the, her relatives' boy. Uh, however, uh, she has struggled so much in her life because she was disagree for getting married as she couldn't finish her higher education. Um, but later she adjusts it. And now she has five children. And she is working hard for her children to give higher education. She always motivate and teach her children at home as well and inspire to be educator. Okay, very good. How old are her children? Sir, professor. How old are her children? Yeah, one is um, eight years old. Yeah, so eight years young. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Seven, five, three. It's a small. Okay, so it's a long haul before they finally. Yeah. Get, yeah. Okay. Um, so what about someone in the public eye? Professor, I didn't find it. Okay, you didn't think of one? All right, just make sure to put one in the post. That's all. Okay. Um, Marzia, go ahead. Okay, here's Roshan. Uh, That's something, but okay, I'll do Marzia first and then I'll go over to the chat. I know, Professor, you can go first in the chat because I already talked, so no problem. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, Roshani, culturally, women are told they have to survive. Anyone in their in-laws' home, uh, no matter how, because the husband's taken as superior always and taken as a god for the women. During marriage, the bride's father says to the groom that if you kill my daughter, then that's a curse. And if you keep her safe, it's the blessing or religious kindness, which is so bad. Slowly, this tradition is declining, but can still be seen in some of the societies. OK, so it's up to the guy to decide, totally up to the guy to decide how to treat the woman. She's just his object. And of course, her father wants his son-in-law to treat her well rather than poorly. <laughs> okay, let's hope. Um, all right, let's see. Hello, Professor. Fatima, go ahead. Yes, Professor, I would like to say uh, about uh, one of my neighbors uh, in which this is not a uh, public eye, but uh, the history is uh, became public in my community uh, because as, uh, the man is very shitter. Uh, it's like uh, he's already married as uh, my neighbor fell in love with him after, uh, after uh, then after two years, they got married and uh, they had also one baby who is th I think three years. There is three years old, and then uh, he did, he he forced her to do many works, even of his uh, relatives, and then uh, she became uh, very angry with him. Uh, Sometimes they uh, they involve a little bit uh, conflict, uh, but his purpose is uh, to marry someone, someone else. Uh, and then uh, she she he, she is not agree with him, and then uh, not agree means she don't want to separate from him. Uh, but uh, he divorced her. Uh, finally, uh, finally maybe last year after I came at AUW, uh, she she did suicide. I really shocked to hear about the history. Yeah, I remember that too. And she's, she has a two-year-old? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. That happens. That's not uncommon. 
Is there anybody in the public eye you can think of, Fatima? Nope. I didn't find it. Okay. Okay, so Roshani said it's a good thing women are now educated. They're working and fighting for their rights. But the poor women and uneducated women, it's still the same. Um, but really, in your generation, I think your generation can make a lot of a lot of difference, even though it might seem like it's not that much difference. Uh, history, you know, it's hard. It's hard um, to cut through all this stuff. There's so many people and it's so deeply entrenched. But I'm sure that the efforts that are made for the most part will bring about change. And that's partly because Melinda Gates and Mackenzie Scott are really putting serious money into it and the United Nations and the NGOs. So developing countries really wanna educate their women. If they wanna develop, they know they can't develop without educating women. And so there's a profit motive, you know, if you can get it, you know, we'll be a wealthier country if you educate, okay, whatever, we'll do anything just to get richer. All right, fine. You don't have to do it on principle. Just do it because you can get richer. <laughs> Just do it. I don't care. Uh, but really, it will change. Um, one thing Melinda Gates said was the first thing she, you know, she had other ideas about what she was going to do. And then all of a sudden, you know, she found out everyone's getting malaria. I mean, the first thing they did as philanthropists was to put computers in every public library in the US. Well, then she found out, gee, there's a whole lot of kids that can't even make it to the public library, you know, because they live so far away or whatever. And also, uh, gee, these are the kind of computers that require Gates, you know, the Gates company was making money <laughs> off of their philanthropy. And that, like, that didn't go over very well. But then um, she, she wanted something like education, but she realized what women really needed was contraception. Like if they can't control when they have children and how many they have, have and when they marry and all that, then they can't control their lives, they can't get educated. So that was her first step was to realize We've got to make contraception ex accessible. Um, she's also Catholic. She's raised Catholic. She went to Catholic schools. And so I don't know if you know, but the Catholic Church is against artificial birth control. So she has really spoken out against the church's policies. They just want natural family planning. I don't know if you know, you know, the rhythm method. She said that that's, and, and the Republican party in the US, they don't fund uh, NGOs that do anything other than natural family planning. And she said only 1% of the world's women actually use it. Well, mostly they can't use it because their husbands won't do it, right? If they tell them you must abstain for a week or five days, they just don't do it. You know, it's not like the women really want to break the rules. Uh, it's their husbands. I mean, they don't want to get pregnant. It's not their fault. It's not their idea. So Melinda Gates is, is in trouble with conservative Catholics, but she's determined and it makes a lot of difference. Birth control used to be a really big deal in the 1960s. I remember it was zero population growth, no population growth. I didn't know if I would ever have kids. I had never thought, I wasn't thinking of being a normal person anyway. I was gonna go be a miss missionary. So I wasn't thinking about kids, but, but I did think, well, if I do, should I have kids, right? Because we got to have a lot fewer kids because of environmental problems. Um, 
I ended up having three kids, but none of them were planned. It was very ironic. My father was a founder of the family planning clinic in my town because my town was very conservative. It had a lot of people who were illiterate in, in English. They knew German, but it had a really high illiteracy rate because it had all these big Catholic families living out on farms. And, um, you know, they'd have 15 kids, 12 kids. So my dad and some other doctors, Catholic and otherwise, started the family planning clinic. And they didn't do abortions because that just would have been <laughs> completely out. But I mean, he got trashed a lot. And people, you know, I remember some women at a store I was in, they found out I was Kenneth Beck's daughter and that did not go over well. I got some dirty looks, <laughs> but then it was just ironic that I ended up having three unplanned children <laughs> when my dad was, you know, I mean, I really did a lot of planning. It just didn't work, but it's just ironic. Life is like that. It's kind of crazy. Um, so Sadia, did you, um, did you have something? So I probably saw I lost my connection in, in the meantime. Okay. Do you have uh, some examples of Hera kinds of women? Um, did you uh, have... Did you have some examples? No promise. Okay. Did you read the assignment? Yes, professor. Okay. Anyway, um, I, I hope by now you would understand. I think I even typed it into the stream, but anyway. Um, so Mahira, what did you want to say? About Hera. Well, you, you had your hand up before, right? Yeah. Oh, no, not Mahira, Marzia. Where's Marzia? I'm here, Professor. Go ahead, Marzia. Sorry. It's okay. Professor, I wanted to talk about Humaira, the writer of Dancing in the Mosque. Oh, the Dancing in the Mosque book? Yeah. Uh, actually, she uh she i guess she had a very difficult childhood uh because of the situation the security and the family society so she studied she went to study uh, uh persian literature in in uh, iran and she uh uh introduced with her husband and then they got married and they they had a very like in public eye uh, in public, I people thought that they had a very uh, successful life because both were educated. The husband were a um, university teacher. He had a uh, PhD. So people thought that educated men maybe do not harm. Because I really, before their divorce, I thought that he is a really good educated because of, uh, he had an academic personality. And I thought that uh, this kind of men will never harm women. Uh, but, uh, and also, uh, like, they both were so successful. She was really strong. She, ha she uh, had written many Persian books, history. So I thought that her husband is good. If there was another man, she, uh, he will not allow her. And it, it's good, and she gets successful, and she is strong. So I, I really admired both of them. But after 14 years of marriage, they separated. And 14 years for me, it was shocking and sad because for me, both, both looked good together. But uh, when, when she talked about her history, that how she got separated, it was sad. That the sadness for me is that um, it, sometimes education also can't bring changes. Uh, and uh, her husband cheated on her on the back of her and he, he he was in a relationship with her students so younger uh, and uh, she, it was not of course it was not acceptable for Homero so she said that 
she can't uh, live and she got divorced and then she she really tried hard to get uh, like uh, her her baby back and she faced lots of problem and finally she could do that uh, because uh, according to the law like uh, in Afghanistan the women the mother who has the financial ability she can take but if she doesn't have the financial ability to support the baby she cannot do that so she had the financial ability and she says in her in her book and also in her some is, is speeches she says that she had really bad days after she got divorced because she went to us and she was studying training and also she 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 had to work uh, different shifts to find money and to survive and on that difficult situation she write the book dancing in the mosque and she says that after that book, she could buy the, that money, she could buy a, a home for herself and for her wife, because her son, because she says that she lost everything. She worked for 14 years, and after that, she lost everything. And she couldn't get anything, although she also worked. So, but right now, uh, I really admire her. She is so successful, she is so strong, she works for uh, children's education. And although she, right now she is not in the country, uh, but she works and it's really admirable. Yeah, actually the really awful thing is that her husband will not let his son even look at pictures of her. Yeah, in the beginning, he didn't allow. And she wasn't allowed to see any pictures of him right much less zoom or anything i mean there's lots of stuff they could do yeah but the book you know as far as i know they're not allowed he won't let his son have any contact with his mother it's really awful yeah but fortunately right now they are together oh that the son yeah yeah did she get custody of him yeah yeah and right now they both are together. Okay, good. Um, but anyway, yeah, if, if the rest of you want to read the rest of that book, I just didn't want to assign it because um, it was a lot of reading. But again, it's a good book. It helps you practice your English. Um, all right, so is there anybody else who wanted to make another comment? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the research papers because here's what happened. There were maybe a half dozen of them that I just could not seem to communicate the difference between a topic and a thesis. It, a thesis is something you have to prove and the paper needs to in increase, add to the body of knowledge. So I've said that before, but I decided I would type up something to give an example. Um, I think Sristi's paper, the one I had for an example, it was an example, but it was a different subject matter. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to let you rewrite the paper again. It's too much work for you. It's too much work for me. And so I'll just give you maybe a 77 or maybe an 80, depending upon the English. But I do want you to learn the lesson. And then you have an option for your final paper. So your second paper is not a research paper. It's a paper about you and the goddesses in your life. You can, you know, have some outside articles if you want. But a research paper is about something where you're adding to the body of knowledge uh, of, you know, public knowledge. And this one is about you just adding to your knowledge about yourself. That's the second paper. Now, the third paper can be a research paper or it can be just a paper about what you learned from the class. So if you want to actually make a big step forward in your ability to do a research paper, by doing a second one where you learn the lessons of the first one, that's fine. But if you're, you know, you just don't want to try it and you just want to write an essay about what did you learn 
from the class about women, I can, I'll have some sort of topic. Well, let's see, I think I had a topic at the beginning, the first day, how do you envision, you know, moving women forward in the next generation? So you can do either one of those, but let me just show you what I came up with for um, an example of just the beginning part of the paper, um, the model, all right? Okay. So, all right, it just says, I, I read a lot of papers about the importance of education for women. Yes, very true. That's what Melinda Gates says, but that's not a research paper. That's just a, a fact. <laughs> okay, so what I'd like you to do in the, in the background, and again, this probably isn't standard. And so, but I, but I don't think it's asking, you know, any sort of quirky, weird, difficult thing. I just want you to start out from where you are. Like, why are you doing this? So be something, I am from Bangladesh. I know that Brock is the world's largest NGO. NGO. It was started in Bangladesh by a Bangladeshi businessman, and it's focused on the empowerment of women. I'm now attending this small liberal arts for college for women. Uh, I know that this is part of the culture of, of Bangladesh is to empower women, right? And so um, this is why I wanted to write about the education of women, right? And I also wanted, whoops, um, to uh, study what is it, what aspects of, um, I want to get an education and I want to use it to empower other women. Therefore, I want to do research on background studies of the connection between education for women and their active participation in public life, right? What kind of education motivates women to go out there? Because I know this is very broad, right? I wanted to do one general study done by the United Nations, one article about Brock in particular, and one article about AUW and the effect of higher education on women's empowerment, which could be based on research from any developing country. Okay, you could do either one article about AUW or the effect of higher education. Then I will then use AUW's institutional structure and mission statement to show how it has responded to what the research indicates is the best way to educate women so they will contribute the most to public life and change international culture in my lifetime, right? So you've got some very general, education is good, but this particular paper is gonna hone on, hone in on this because this is my experience. And I think I, I'm eager to find out and maybe I can even contribute, but my paper can contribute. The main claim is that women's education is absolutely necessary for developing countries. Nations that ignore it fall behind. Nations that focus on it move ahead. Research studies have linked to that, blah, 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 blah. I will describe, right? This is the main claim. The three, so a lot of you had these just really general claims and you never got to a main thesis statement, right? I will describe three best practices from global research that have been incorporated into the creation and operation of AUW. Then I will find out what AUW graduates are doing now, 13 years after it was founded, and what current AUW students plan to do and how they plan to achieve their goals. I will include what the Career Services Office does and the data it's collected about AUW graduates. Okay, you might wanna write your final on this, but my main point is, here's what I'm. this paper is going to contribute, right? three best practices on this particular issue, right? 
the significance. Certainly many studies have been done. My particular study will contribute to the accumulation of knowledge because I will show how the general trends and principles lead to achievable outcomes in relation to what I know, AUW and its graduates. My own experience gives me the hands-on perspective necessary to figure out which aspects of AUW work because of their structure, which work or do not work because of the particular people doing the key jobs, and what factors in the graduates' lives have the most effect on what they do after graduating. Other developing nations that want to educate their women can then evaluate what would be best for them, given their culture and resources. All right. So I, for those of you who I end up giving, you know, somewhere between a 77 and an 83 or 84, it's just the main thing is that it was too general and it didn't contribute to the body of knowledge. Um, it emphasizes that women's education is important. So I ended up reading six, about six papers that were so alike, but they were very generic. Um, and the other thing is that these sections should not have the references to your, your um, articles. These sections are just general. I mean, the background might have one brief reference, but mostly you're just giving this background stuff, the claim and the significance. And then, then you explain the methodology, explain the stuff, but it's in the literature review part that you explain this article um, explains how one of the best practices is blah, right? Um, so the UN has these best practices. Brock has this best practice. AUW has clearly adapted that practice. And I know from my own experience that that was a good idea because that was part of what motivated me to come or what kept me here or what's enabled me to move on. Or you can interview, right, for this one, you could interview some graduates or you could go to career studies and find out their data about what the graduates are doing. Did the graduates, did they get interviews? Did they say having writing seminars made a big difference or having pathways or access you know, something where you're really trying to figure out how to do this, how to, what do they, they call it, uh, put it to scale, right? So you have some, AUW is definitely a unique school. And the question is, what, what practices at AUW need to be scaled so that other, you know, it needs to be incorporated in a lot of other organizations. Um, I mean, I would be ecstatic if a lot of you took on this paper, right? If you tried to write this paper, but you don't have to. Uh, my main thing is that this is only one example of what I ran into again and again, is that wasn't specific enough in terms of what will this paper contribute to the body of knowledge that we don't already know, right? Now, let me just see if you have questions about that. Somebody have a question about that? Um, and, th and then you can go look back at your paper. I don't want you to be, you know, freaked out and have a, you know, um, have a, you know, fear of doing the right thing. If you want to meet with me during an office hour, um, I haven't gotten all the papers back yet, but some of them I'm reading a second time. Some of them I asked you to go to the writing center and you tried and it didn't work. And as far as I'm concerned, you can just move on. I don't think your final grade will be affected by it, right? So that most of you, if, if you get, um, you know, if you're, you're averaging uh, an A plus 
uh, you know, a low grade on one of those papers won't uh, take away an A. Uh, for some of you, if you're getting sort of Bs on your posts, that's half of the grade is the posts. And if you do well on the non-research paper, and then if you do a final that's not a research paper, you know, you'll be fine. It's just that if you want to sort of move from here's the here's what I was thinking the first time and here's what I was thinking in the final and so in your own mind you can remember how you made that step forward um you know it it just depends upon what you want to learn you know um the paper the paper I have in the syllabus right now is synthetic thinking you learn how to put everything together. But if you want to do a research paper, then you would learn that, which is really honing in on something and getting data to so it's a, you know, it's different, but they're all important. And you will be using those skills uh, throughout your your life in general to understand life, I think to to live a better life. But in any career that you engage in. I think people both have to think both analytically and get, you know, centered, find data, create data, as well as synthetically figuring out how this little bit of knowledge fits in with all this other knowledge. So all of it is important. And um, I think you should have agency about your education in this case, and you decide what you want to learn the most. Um, so it's time to go. I'll see you next week. And there'll there's a post. I think it's already posted. There's a place to put it. And I will try to get the rest of those papers read. There's five of them that maybe I haven't read at all. And I, the machine is weird when you repost. I'm not quite sure if it's if the five includes the second handing it in or not. Um, if you can, when I ask you to rewrite, if you can just remove that one and then put a new one in so the machine will tell me that I haven't read this one, that's a little more helpful to me. But I mean, I can survive. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Uh, okay, it's 1041. I need to let you go. And I hope you enjoy the stories as much as I do. I mean, I don't know.